My name is Shermon Burgess. I grew up in a rural town in New South Wales, Australia. My Islamic name is Hamza, gifted to me by one of the Islamic sisters. I was once the leader of the two largest anti-Islam groups in Australia, the United Patriots Front and Reclaim Australia. These two movements had thousands of members across the country. These two groups I led for quite some time against Islam. I wished to destroy all mosques and remove all Muslims from Australia because I was brainwashed by Zionist media. I'm going to give you one word. Lifestyle. And by this I mean a new, pure lifestyle with great values such as stoicism, morality, honor, protectionism. All the things that make this faith so very great. As well as a love for Allah. Now, when I was... How can I... Best way that I can explain this. When I was a Kufar still, I lived all these sins, all these sins that the Kufar do, I was living them. And because I'd lived them, I'd now started investigating into Islam, reading, reading about different quotes from the Quran and different Islamic texts. And then watching videos from Islamic preachers talking about morality and how their women conduct themselves. And I was watching these videos of Muslim women talking about how they should protect their morality and not be sexual objects that men glorify as sex objects. And I was like, wow. And it brought me back to that image when I was in the pub that night of that non-Muslim woman with her butt up in the air and her friends clapping, telling her to get her slut on. And I'm like... This woman, this sister, is speak, preaching about morality and decency and morals and protecting herself. And this other one is displaying herself like an open can of dog food for every man in the vicinity of the area. This was a real eye-opener for me. As well as the way the men conduct themselves in Islam. You know, they're not out writing themselves off horribly on alcohol. They're not taking copious amounts of drugs. A practicing Muslim, and when I say this, a practicing Muslim, not, not a person who calls themselves Muslim by name, but does not conduct themselves as a Muslim, does not follow the values of the Holy Quran. I'm talking about practicing Muslims, the Muslim men. They will pray five times a day. They will work out, lift weights, and do fight training, keep their body physically fit and strong in case they have, ever have to defend the Ummah. They will pray. They praise Allah. They thank Allah for everything. They're not wasting their finances on poisoning their bodies. They're not watching mindless droves of pornography. This is the purity of Islam and bringing you back to the right path. People sit there and say many things about Muslims. I heard it all. I used to be one of them that said them myself, being the leader, or the former leader, of two of the largest anti-Islam groups in Australia. So I heard all the things, you know, Muslims do this, Muslims do that, Muslims are terrorists, Muslims chain their uh, wives to the kitchen sink and they're not allowed to leave the house. These are all the things you will hear from the Kufar, who have no idea. They have not picked up one Quran in their life. But it is not their fault. As Muslims, it is our fault because we are meant to be out there. Like my brothers from New Zealand, my Muslim brothers from New Zealand said, we need to be out there correcting all the propaganda that has been spread about Muslims, all the lies in the media and Hollywood movies that has been spread about Muslims. We need to show them true Islam and that Allah is a beautiful, merciful, thankful God. And why do we fear Allah? Because we want to live in His way. We don't want to live a degenerate lifestyle that upsets Him. He's our Creator. He created the heavens, the earth, the people, everything on it. Why would we want to upset this man?
Why? I shouldn't even call him a man. I should call him the greatest creator in all of the universe. But we do not want to upset him. No. We want him to be proud of us. And we must strive so he is proud of us. First of all, I would say it would have been mainstream media indoctrination, portraying Muslims in a bad light, portraying them all as terrorists that want to do nothing but harm people, hurt people, shoot people, behead people, blow them up. This is the image that mainstream media in Western countries have portrayed towards the Muslim community. The other reason is, if you look at any Hollywood movie, the USA and Israel are always the good guys. The Muslims are always the bad guys. They are always the ones trying to kill people, hurt people, and so forth. But this brainwashing is what brought me into the anti-Islam movement. Because in my mind, after receiving this brainwashing, I saw Islam as a direct threat to the Australian way of life. And I saw in my own heart at that time that I had to do something to protect the nation that I lived in. There was nothing further from the truth though. I had a lot of hate flowing through me back then and you must understand that when I had this hate flowing through me, I wanted nothing more than to purge Islam from the shores of Australia completely. My goal at that time, in that period of my life, was to rid the nation of not only just Muslims, but any teaching that could be shared towards anyone about Islam. Because in my mind, they were the enemy. That is what the Western world had taught me. The Western world had taught me that these were evil people out to destroy the West and kill off the West and kill the culture. And this is how I ended up in the anti-Islam movement. And then later on ended up leading two of the largest movements. So what makes someone like me, who was the biggest opponent of Islam in Australia that you have probably ever seen, turn his life around, discover the truth, and become a Muslim. Hang in tight, because the truth is about to be revealed. Alhamdulillah. Some members of my family were just like, hey, he can do his own thing, whatever. Certain family members did not like it. One of them was my father, a man I actually looked up to greatly. He was very concerned. He said to me, not all of them can be bad, surely. He goes, you have to be very careful doing this sort of stuff. You should really get out of it. You should get out of these anti-Islam movements and not bother with them. At the time though, I thought my father does not know what he's talking about. My father should just be quiet. I don't need to listen to him. I know what I know. You know, the media's painting Islam in this light. The media can't be wrong. Hollywood movies are showing them as terrorists. And here I was. Here I was around different family members. Some of them didn't agree. Some of them did. But my father was the one that disagreed the most, more than anybody. Now, this one's the real eye-opener. For the simple fact that I was one of those people who used to drink a lot of alcohol. Used to love partying, used to go out, drink, chase women, pick women up. Something that I was actually very good at, but something that I am not proud of now. Because the simple fact was, is there was something missing in my life. And I was filling this void with alcohol, sex... And all these other haram things. 
Now, one night when I was out with a group of my friends, I was sitting inside a pub, it was very busy, and I was looking around at all these other people inside the pub, and I was listening to some of the conversations that would go on around me, and this is when I really started to think, you know, maybe the Muslims were right. Maybe they were right about staying away from alcohol and drugs and promiscuity and all these other sins that are very haram. Because I started hearing conversations, you know, there was one woman it was turning around, bending over, showing a butt to her friends, and her friends were clapping, saying, yeah, girl, get your slut on. And I was just disgusted by it. I didn't find it attractive. I thought to myself, that is the last woman I'd ever want to be in a relationship with or marry anything like that, who acts like that. And then what really set it off for me was when a good friend of mine, come up to me he looked really depressed he looked like he'd been drinking a lot lately he'd lost a lot of weight he looked terrible and he was telling me that he just moved back to town and that the man he was working for his boss he goes well me and my girlfriend are split up and I asked him what happened and he goes my boss was having sex my work boss was having sex with my girlfriend my girlfriend was cheating on me with my boss he goes so I left that job he goes not only did I lose my job over it but I lost my girlfriend over it and these are the sort of things that these kuffar will do to each other what these non-muslims will do to each other the betrayal the the drug abuse the, the the filth the putrid ways that they act and I just sat there and I started looking around and I was like look who I am surrounding myself with Look at the things that are happening around me in this society. Maybe the Muslims are right. So that's when I really started investigating into Islam. I'm like, what is it that keeps their people under such good moral conduct compared to anyone in the West? There were different friends of mine that completely disowned me. They could not handle it, you know. They threw all the insults in the world at me. Oh, so you're going to have four wives now, are you? Oh, you're going to trade your car in for a camel? Oh, when are you going to wear a suicide vest and go blow people up? These are the attacks I received online from many people that used to be my friends. Some of my friends were very supportive. They said, oh, hey, well, that was a shocker. I didn't see that coming. But as long as you're happy and you feel that this is the path for you, then I'll support you. And I know that these people were my true friends. And this is why I'll definitely stick by them, 100%, just as I know they'll stick by me. So my friends were sort of 50% of them attacked me, didn't want to talk to me, disowned me, and the other 50% stuck by me, my true friends. And this is what, how you will find out who your true friends are. And like Allah says, if I close one door for you, I'll open another one that is even greater. So when Allah closes doors, he closes them because there is a door that no longer serves you in your life anymore. And you might not understand at the time, but later on down the track he opens other doors to much greater things. Allah does not give you what you want. He gives you what you need. And that is always more important than what you always seem to want to desire. This is how Allah works. And as Westerners say, well, the sane ones anyway, God works in mysterious ways. A thing of absolute beauty, purity, and love. Oh, and as a male, we cannot forget masculinity because we are spiritual, we are loving, we are giving, 
We are kind, and as Muslim men, we are strong. We have every asset that a man needs to conquer this life. Praise Allah, because becoming a Muslim was the best thing I ever did. No alcohol, no drugs, no pornography, no degenerate behavior, none of that. I'm stronger, healthier, I have mental clarity, it has improved my life to no end. And there is no other faith out there that is more grounded than Islam. If you can find one for me, let me know, because I haven't found it. Insha'Allah. Praise Allah. And in ending this, let's read from Fortress of the Muslim. Ashadu an la ilaha ilalahu wa dahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu ana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone, who has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. There will be people from white supremacist, neo-Nazi movements and other movements like the LGBTQ that dislike Muslims very, very much. I will say this to you right now. Coming from someone who was probably the biggest Muslim hater in Australia at one stage in my life. If you were going to walk around hating Islam, at least know why you hate it. So I challenge you, pick up the Quran, read it with an open mind, from start to finish, with an open mind. Don't just cherry pick the verses you want to use to uh, attack Muslims. Read it in its entirety. And then, after you do that, watch some speeches online from Muslim preachers on modesty on morals, on values, then ask yourself, would this be a healthier life to live or going back to the kuffars where they're smoking bombs, putting needles in their arms, sucking on a meth pipe, drinking alcohol all night, sleeping with their best friend's girlfriend or their girlfriend sleeping around with their own mates is that the lifestyle you want to live? Islam is the truth. And once you study it, you cannot deny it. And it grows in your heart like wildfire. 